Hello everyone, how you doing? I just wanted to find out, how exactly are you coping with your systems during the rainy season? I mean, we talked about this during the dry season, how the dust can cover up your solar panels and all that. And we try to see how we can optimize the solar panels to ensure that enough energy comes into your system. But now it's the opposite, it's the rainy season. And when it rains, there are no sun. So what exactly are you gonna do? So I just wanted to find out, how are you coping? Is it very frustrating? Are you able to get enough energy into the system to be able to use and power your energy needs? How exactly are you managing? Do you need some help? I mean, if there's anything I can do, I would love to help. <laughs> All right, guys, if you want to find out the very best way you can manage your systems and generate enough energy during the rainy season, you definitely have to stick around because I'll be right back. Hey, I'm back. How you doing, everybody? My name is Iken now from Smiling Sun. Everything solar installation, everything inverter installation, everything going green. If this is your first time on the channel, or if you've been coming around, you definitely need to subscribe and become part of the community. And of course, the more you subscribe, like, comment, and share, you will be able to propel the YouTube algorithm to show this video to more people. All right, so let's solve our problem problems together all right we appreciate that kindly subscribe and be part of this community all right so how do you manage your system during the rainy season it's very very frustrating <laughs> I know, I know that feeling. So imagine a nurse running all night shift and in the morning, another nurse is supposed to come take over. All right, another nurse is supposed to resume in the morning and take over from the nurse who has just done the night shift. And in the morning, nobody shows up. That can be very frustrating. <laughs> and that's essentially what happens with the battery. When you've used your battery all night and in the morning you're expecting the solar to take over because it's like shift. The battery does the night shift and the solar does the day shift. All right, so they all work hand in hand. So when in the morning you're expecting the sun to come and take over from your depleted batteries, your batteries are in different levels, different percentages. One would have depleted by 10%, another by 20%, another by 30%, some completely all drained out. And now you're not worried because you know that in the morning, the solar is gonna come take over as usual. And then by 6 a.m. in the morning, it suddenly begins to rain and you're wondering maybe it's like a small rain but no it's all raining all cats and dogs oh my goodness and at that point that's when you know that the sound of the rain on the roof can mean different things to different people <laughs> for that dude who's worked his butt all week and this is happening on a Saturday morning the sound of the rain on the roof is good news <laughs> all right and for couples who are making babies oh this is gonna encourage them to do what I didn't even plan doing <laughs> <laughs> but for a man whose battery is completely drained that's a different ball game but don't worry because i'll definitely hold you by the hands and walk you through on how you can cope with your systems during the rainy season to ensure that you're able to generate enough solar energy to run your homes as usual and we're talking about how to manage your systems during the rainy season to ensure that you maximize the little energy that is coming in okay so a lot of people at this time get really really very frustrated it doesn't have to be that way there's always a way around it okay and funny enough during the rainy season is when you generate a lot of energy that's the time you generate almost the full capacity of your solar panels they struggle to do that during the dry season but during the rainy season when you have sun during the rainy season the output is really always very high okay that's when you can hit your wattage almost to the fullest so what's the very best way you can maximize the energy during the rainy season to ensure that you'll be able to get enough energy to run your homes 
So the very first thing would have been during installation, the solar panels need to be properly angled so that when the rains fall on the solar panel, it properly drains off. So it doesn't constitute a blood vision on the glass so that the solar panel still attract the little energy that is present during the rain. That's very important, but that is essentially gonna be the pre-rainy season. All right, this would have happened long before the rainy season. So you need to ensure that while this solar panels are being installed the proper angle directions is instituted while they're doing the installations for you okay all right so if you're an installer you need to be able to ensure that the rains are coming the solar panels need to be properly angled The second one will definitely be not having any overhead tree or leaves uh, that could potentially cast a shadow over the solar panels, all right? Because it really gets really, really, really bad when the weather is very cloudy. And when the weather is very cloudy, it casts a lot of shadows and completely covers your solar panel. So that would have stopped you from generating the little energy you would have been able to generate when it's raining because there's still some presence of sunshine when it's raining. So always ensure that there's nothing that has the potential to cast a shadow over the solar panel that is close to the solar panel. Always pull it away, okay? Because it really gets really, really bad during very cloudy days when the weather is cloudy, it casts very huge shadows and completely covers the solar panel. You wouldn't want that happening do you so ensure that that doesn't happen another way to ensure that you manage your systems during the rainy season if you can afford to do it change your pwm to mppt all right because the pwm goes completely dead during the rainy days so whenever the weather is cloudy or when the rain is falling the pwm will go to sleep it, it's just not so loud that you can hear it from wherever you are <laughs> So if you can afford to change it, change your PWM to MPPT solar charge controllers. The MPPT will be able to track and get you a little more energy during the rainy days, but the PWM will completely go to sleep. That's one way you can improve your solar system energy during the rainy days, okay? And show that you change the PWM and replace it with an MPPT. Another very important thing you can do during rainy days is to regulate your load. It's important. I mean, it's a no brainer. If you're using your air conditioners, you need to understand that your source of energy is the sun. If there is no sun, then you need to turn off the air conditioners, all of the heavy appliances. You cut down on your load. So when you cut down on your load, the little energy that you have, you can maximize it pending when the sun comes again. All right, so it's important that you cut down your load. Whatever you have, if you have your refrigerator, turn it off. If your air conditioners are on, turn it off. Stop washing your clothes. Just maximize the little energy that you have until you're able to see the sun again. This works for me, so I use it for most of my installations. So I think you guys should try it as well. Uh, this is a digital timer, so this regulates the heavy appliances that you have in the house for instance if you're guaranteed of 24 hours electricity there's no need to run your refrigerator day and night this timer ensures that refrigerator is turned on in the morning by 8 a.m. and turned off by 6 p.m. so this digital search timer ensures that your refrigerator is turned on in the morning by 8 a.m. and turned off in the evening by 6 p.m. or 4 p.m. all right so it regulates it and it keeps turning it on and off religiously every single day and in that way nobody's gonna forget and your refrigerator gets running in the night and completely drains your battery so this really comes very handy and i'll recommend it to you guys it's really very good so this is very important that you put it in your installations to regulate the very heavy appliances from always draining your batteries so if you want to get this i'll put a link below uh, where you can get it all right so you check it out So for most of the installations that I do, I always advocate for oversizing the system. That means adding more solar panels than you need. So the more solar panels you have, the better. So it comes really handy in situations when the yield is not so much, when the weather is very cloudy. The solar panels, the excess solar panels that you have will be able to bring in a lot of energy for you to use at that 
particular point in time. But if you have very little solar panels, it's not going to be yielding anything because it's going to need the sun to be at its peak for you to be able to hit the full capacity of your solar panels. But when the solar panel is oversized, so during days when you don't have so much of sun, the solar panel, because it's enough, brings in something very significant for you to be able to run your energy needs while you wait for the sun to show up again. And lastly, it will be your battery bank. So your battery bank is very important, all right? Try as much as you can to invest in batteries. So when you invest in batteries and you have such situations where there's no energy coming from the sun, you rely on your batteries. Your batteries will run you for a very long time until the sun shows up again to begin to give you some solar energy. So invest in your battery bank. If four batteries could be enough for you, if you can afford to have eight batteries, that would be awesome. If eight batteries is gonna meet up your needs and you can afford to have 12 batteries that's really so cool the more batteries you have the longer the lifespan of the batteries can be so it provides you with enough energy in situations when the energy is not coming so much anymore from the sun you rely on the stored energy that you have in your batteries so having a large battery bank is very important so always try as much as you can if you can afford it to invest in the batteries because the battery is very essential in the entire solar system it acts as a buffer to ensure that at that time when the solar is not giving you what the solar is supposed to give you the batteries step up and take over and pulls you the entire time through to ensure that you have power sustained until the sun comes again all right everybody thank you so very much that's all we got time for today if you haven't subscribed kindly subscribe all right and be part of this community all right and help youtube to also send it to more people who might find it very very useful all right thank you guys so much do not forget to comment don't forget to share do not forget to like my name is ikena from smiling sun everything solar installation everything inverter installation everything going green see you guys in the next one